put away your umbrellas, get out your mint cakes, hike to your nearest chair, pop in your headphones and get ready for the next episode of the Lakes International Comic Art Festival Podcasts with your hosts live from the Lakes, the practically perfect Nicole Bates and don't get him angry, Ian Loxham. Hello and welcome to the Lakes International Comic Art Festival podcast episode 85. My name's Ian. And I'm Nikki. And we're recording off a laptop as in opposed to a nice microphone setup so it I might know. sound a bit different. Tinny, I think the word is. Tinny. Because we've been rubbish and not organised anything. We're not doing very well, are we? And we've left it to uh, Mike and Pete. They are definitely to do all the carrying hard work. the can. <laughs> but we've been carrying it for 70 plus episodes. 70 years! We've been at so it 70 years! They're carrying it at the moment. <laughs> Um, so this main episode is all about um, the genre World Cup, mm-hmm. uh, zombies versus superheroes. <laughs> Obviously which, not the zombies. Which features son of Ken Mark Hughes as well, on top of that. Yeah. So that's that's coming up. Um, now Pete said the semis are over, only three episodes of the genre World Cup left. That means the quarterfinals are over and they're now into the semis. <laughs> Pete, Pete doesn't know what is going on when he emails me, I tell you. <laughs> Um, is this going to go on forever? No, no, we there need is there. No, no, there is no ending. They will be if done by ending, the end of this year. If there's an ending, the world will implode. They cannot finish. <laughs> um, we hope everybody enjoyed Fort Bubble. It was weekend just mm-hmm. gone. Uh, if you anything feedback about that, let us know. Just out of interest. Yep. Always interested in what other place people are doing. Are yeah, there? especially with everyone trying new things at the moment. Yeah. What so. worked, what didn't. Yep. What can be improved, what can be added to the festival. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're festival standardised, you know, because yep. we've had a brief meeting with Julie. Yeah. And it's... You didn't say the name like you say it. What? When you say Julie. Majuli. Majuli. <laughs> <laughs> festival director. And there's already things being planned for next year. Exciting things that we can't say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're definitely looking at incorporating some of what they've done with the online side mm. into next year because we've learned so much. So Yeah, which is a good idea because Definitely. it makes our reach so much better. Like little II fingers or ET's fingers. And there's definitely things you can do on video that you can't do just in a live mm-hmm. show as well. So, yeah, so interesting. Things are afoot. Ooh. And as, as soon as we can tell you about it, we will. I mean, we'll be telling you about it probably a day or two after it's been announced. But still, <laughs> we'll tell you about it. We have um, our fingers on the pulse. Yes. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to quickly run through, because we haven't got much content, I'm afraid, today. So it's Mike and Peter that are giving the content, <laughs> not us. Um, just some of the facts from the online festival. Mm. So you've not seen this yet, have you? Backed me up. Okay. I had to be so careful what I said then. <laughs> I didn't want to swear. <laughs> um, the number of guests, more than 60. That's really good. It was, it is. Yeah. I mean, 61 then, um, but more than 60. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's a lot of guests. Mm. Um, more than you can probably fit on a standard weekend. Yes, yeah. But There's you could go and see everything, yeah. 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 Um, number of training workshops, seven. Mm-hmm. We did one of them. We did do. Um, plus 18 little ICAF workshops. That's Yeah, that was such a good idea. I think, well, they've always had the kids stuff, yep. but the, the branding is there this year, yeah. and it's really jumped out as something bit I don't know it's, exciting it's become something yeah where it was just a, a sidebar yeah and now it's like it seems to be its own beast I feel like it's popped off the main gremlin popped off you know like you know when you get water on a gremlin and they pop off a little gremlin yeah yeah it's that okay <laughs> the only thing that came to my mind is little like Icaf is a little gremlin <laughs> I don't know way. what to say I'm not sure what to it's say like, yeah um but I think it needs to grow now and be a bit more, not just located, like at the minute it's, mm-hmm. it's generally located in the shopping centre. It I think yep. it needs to be Find a bit the more. the library. And the light it needs to be more, it needs to be bigger, it needs to take over a bit more mm-hmm. for the festival because at the end of the day, kids are... The future. The, f- the future, <laughs> just like me, because <laughs> I'm young and fresh. <laughs> You're an old codger. Right. Carry on. <laughs> um, number of website page views. More than 50,000. That's brilliant. Um, that's between the 1st to the 31st of October. So that's a lot that's a, for a yeah. comic website. And I'm going to I'm gonna put out a little fact here about comic stuff. Mm. It doesn't get many views. No. 
it really it, the doesn't. The reach isn't there still at the moment, unless you're one of the big two. The well, even then, it's there. not. It's, you've got to be a, a brand or a name. You know, mm. Kevin Smith is somebody who's focusing on the whole thing. You know, he gets a lot of mm. obviously a lot of hits, but he's been doing it for years. The majority years of podcasts of websites mm. that are looking at everyday comics, small press or whatever, they don't actually get a huge amount of views. No, no. Um, that's why they're always fighting for any penny and all this and the other yeah. because it's just not there. Um, so to have fifty thousand or more than fifty thousand mm. is is exceptional. Mm-hmm. Um, number of films created for the Like Half Live, 90. Oh, that's good. And Julie said not all of these have been put out yet either, have they? No. There's still more content mm-hmm. to come. I'm not sure what they're planning on doing it, but mm-hmm. I think we said to just just sort of drip feed it slowly. Yeah, yeah, keep people interested. Um, so, yeah. Number of YouTube channel views, more than 10,000. That's good. No, it's good again because it's, it's comics yeah. again. It's not huge. Mm-hmm. So, uh, watch time on YouTube, more than 1,230 hours. Was that us? Did we have an loop? <laughs> uh, views of our festival trailer at more than 80,000. That was That's cool, impressive. Yeah. Um, whether that is results of the, the whole week, that whole month, possibly. I don't know. It could even be longer than that, but mm. still, that's a lot. Yeah. Definitely not. Uh, number of website event pages created, more than 70. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the website, there's so much there is actually, content yeah. to go and have a look at. Um, so get yourself delved down. Delve down in the delve down the depths of the website, <laughs> and number of educational resources to download seventeen. So yeah, if you're a teacher or whatever, you can mm. get get your kids working. As I say, we're just a mum looking to try and get yeah. kids into something, keep so, them occupied. Um, the, the festival I think has always tried to do educational things. A lot mm-hmm. of the time, it's it's been for other creators and they've done the university side of As things. I said, they've done, yeah, the more professional um, side. But they've also sent, they always send um, creators to schools and yes. colleges locally yeah. every year as well, which they've not really been able to do this year. But No, not with no. COVID. Co- oh, what's that? Yeah, I don't know, just a little I cough. don't know. Oh, it is just, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting figures. Mm-hmm. Interesting figures. So, it's all good news. Yes. Yeah, very good news, really. Um, but that's all you're going to hear from us today. <laughs> that's it. We're going to pass you over to the real comic heroes. <laughs> I'm not, is it comic heroes now, or are they actually the villain? No, they're, they're Has just... it turned around now? To the no, they're when heroes. the hero becomes the villain. <laughs> they're going to slap me when they see me. <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy, Mike, Pete and Sock. Hours of comic ramblings, they've only gone and got together again. Your host for the Mutter Downs are Mike, the Dungeon Master Williams, and Pete, how do, Taylor. How do, welcome to Mutter Downs, the yakking endlessly about comics section of the podcast. I'm Pete Taylor, chronicler of Silverbeard and reigning comics clever clogs. Online, <laughs> I trade as this man is Pete. <laughs> Not having that. And as, <laughs> and as always, the mutterings will be supplied by... Mike Williams, Lakes International Comic Art Festival podcast contributor, fanboy and our resident zombie expert who will no doubt be disappointed at the end of this show. <laughs> we are joined tonight by another scroll Lord. It's like I've been slacking on booking the guests, isn't it? It could He's be. A fr- <laughs> He's a friend of the podcast, writer, illustrator, graffiti artist and reprobate, the Costello to my abbot, the Lewis to my Martin, it's my partner in crime and comic wife, Mark Hughes. <laughs> my! <laughs> How goes it? <laughs> now, uh, we're, I, I must let everyone know that we're talking tonight to Mark via a new product that he's developed and is just about to um, um, launch. Uh, let me read the marketing material. New sock in a box. A wonderful new device has taken the tech world by storm. In the current climate, it's all too easy to feel alone and isolated. But the new Sock in a Box inter- interactive tablet is proving a massive hit with a worldwide audience. Just set up your device in the corner of your room and then chat away as you crack on with your jobs. Marvel at his colourful turn of phrase and fruity language and see if you can elicit his telltale cackle with a pithy one-liner. 
<laughs> it's not essential to keep up with his beer drinking, but it does make for a fun afternoon. Stay at home and order new sock in a box online today. <laughs> yes. That's what it's all about, kids. Yeah. Never, never, unbook those PlayStation 5s next week. <laughs> uh, Just get, wait for the money to start rolling yeah, in. Yeah. Get, get your deposit on these. <laughs> I must uh, credit my uh, gorgeous wife, Non, who's been doing... Uh, She's been doing sort of family newspapers to send to my daughters away at um, at uni. So uh, that was one of the news stories from the Taylor Times that uh, she sent out a couple of weeks ago. Because, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's a clever one, isn't she? Oh, it's, it's amazing. But, uh, yeah, we have been doing a lot of um, studio time. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So it's been handy. So we've uh, we were both working on our scroll strips uh, recently. So it's nice to be able to talk over what you're doing or while you were doing some of the more sort of mindless tasks. It was a it was a push as well, wasn't it? It was a helpful push. Yeah, I, I thought it, I was, it was definitely getting more work done. It's it, a nice way to do it as well. When when yeah. we were working together on on certain aspects, yeah, I um I lettered mark's uh strip so that was really a lot more collaborative as well than it usually is so we, we could be sending stuff through on whatsapp and having a look at it in real time while we talked over the sock in a box yeah so no it was good yeah it was great and i think it was i'm hoping that it'll uh it'll continue it's been uh yeah it's well, been nice got, yeah we've got a uh, beer time booked in for tomorrow so yeah man i'll see you at apple seven <laughs> a.m <laughs> <laughs> it's great as well actually because because we normally have a uh, sock in a box in the studio which i work with with non so when we do end up with uh an afternoon um early drinking non is just as excited to join into the uh the early <laughs> drinking. <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's going to start early tomorrow but you're back in lockdown mike we're yes. out you're in yeah um i think last episode i was uh, saying about i had last week off work and everyone had gone into self-isolation for three weeks so as a family we could all meet up and swap comics and we we're going to play D D for the whole week and watch niche anime series no doubt and then 48 hours before they were all going to travel up to us uh lockdown uh. so so yeah, go on. Ask me about my amazing week's holiday then. Go on, I oh, dare you. No, that's, that's terrible, though, isn't it? Because <laughs> all that time we put sucks. into self isolating as well. Yeah. Well, I have I have to anyway. Um, yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, my uh, you know the rest of my family don't. Um, but, so it was really yeah, uh, I felt quite bad that they'd gone through that as well. Oh. Um, my sister, she's in lockdown as well now because she's also in England um, and. My mother in Wales has just come out of lockdown. Yeah. So the timing just absolutely sucked. It really did. Where Where is your mum in Wales, Mike? Uh, North Wales in Mould. Oh yeah, and, and Agog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, same with uh, me and my daughters. So just as we come out of lockdown, we can't go and visit them because they're in lockdown. Yeah, same with yeah. one of mine as well. She's up in Guildford. Yeah, same sort of, you know. Mm. I do wish there was a little more uh, sort of, uh, communication between the nations, perhaps. Communication across the <laughs> nation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still, yeah, I mean, yeah, nothing has changed, uh, really. I mean, I, I think the three of us are uh, pretty much confirmed lockdowners by now, aren't we? We're just... Um, we've worked our system out we can keep yeah. active and yeah well i've never left lockdown so yeah no <laughs> well uh let's get on to the genre world cup or yes it's still going on <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. this is this is the bit where I normally have to explain what's going on. Uh, 
and this is getting trickier as we go. But we obviously started out with a huge bunch of genres and we're playing them off football-y, style um, which wasn't a good choice considering neither of us know anything about football. And we're now in the quarterfinals. Um, this is the last of the quarterfinals. So the first quarterfinal we had was horror versus post-apocalypse and the results are in. That's a horror win. Uh, sorry, that was the second quarterfinal. The first quarterfinal was crime versus horror. Uh, was crime versus romance. romance. Crime won. So our first semi-final next episode will be crime versus horror. The Ooh, third quarterfinal. Be a tough one. Mm. Well, they're classics, aren't they? Something went right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have the results in from the third quarterfinal, which was last episode. Um, but after this episode, we should know and be able to declare what the second semi-final is. And it's got way too complicated for all of us. And that's probably about all I can say right now. <laughs> Sound good? There's a table and there's stuff going up the table <laughs> and stuff not making it up the table. And the table was drawn wrong to begin with. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I mentioned how, how we shouldn't have chosen the World Cup as, as a structure <laughs> given our crap knowledge of football. And in the same conversation, I think it was one of my daughters over uh, Skype, um, I think none mentioned uh, using a sort of um, uh, referee red card, yellow card system for uh, misdemeanours that were um, nice. performed by people in the house. Um, but between us, we couldn't exactly work out how many yellow cards were given before it was red. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad my football not. I was like, uh, isn't it? Is it three or is it two? <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we're going to be discussing superhero versus zombie genres. Yeah. I mean, um, they're certainly at the moment pop culture powerhouses. I mean, really, in terms of comics, um, zombie comics, uh, they're still around. They're still, you know, pretty popular. I know, um, I know Walking Dead's finished, but we just had um, Year Zero from AWA. Um, I think Marvel's bringing back Marvel Zombies and. Um, is yeah. DC still going on? Yeah, the Marvel Zombies Resurrection. I think that came that started in September. Right. I've not caught it, so it might have been delayed with COVID. I don't know. Um, there's Expedition Zombie, which is zombie meets um, sort of Survivor reality TV show series. Um, Snow White Zombie Apocalypse was another one I had my eye on. Um, and Ezekiel Himes Zombie Hunter. That does look really good. Uh, it was supposed to come out in September. I haven't been able to order either one or two, so I don't know if it's because they sold out or because probably you know what it's it, been yeah. like. Yeah. So there's, been, like. there's new stuff coming out. There is, isn't there? Yeah, it still seems popular enough. I mean, um, I mean, Mike, you're well. I mean, let's start with zombie. You're the expert, Mike. I mean, what makes you know this uh, this genre? Do you think the entertainment powerhouse it's become? I think the zombie, it's all about all the sort of the background fears for me that it brings out. And to be honest, zombies are just the perfect genre for what we're living in right now, mm. good or bad. It's kind of the same fear um, subjects. Um, you've got, obviously, there's a post-apocalyptic thing to it as well, but it's the spread. It's the the fear of not knowing who's who has who hasn't are you infected um and then it kind of the darker side is that it's not the disease or the zombies it's your fellow humankind that's the real danger yeah. as you're trying to get through this and boy is this kind of <laughs> God, really you nailed it right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, God, I mean, that is now totally. I mean, but, you know, the fear is not just the virus. The fear is that, you know, the 
the person across the way is a Trump supporter or voted for Brexit on top of, you know, everything else. It's that that fear of, of human is not just that they're infected, but they're they're among us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. It feels like something out of a comic when I actually started to see on my on my timeline in several social media accounts loads of anti-vaxxing messages. Oh yeah, and it's like crackpot central. Some of the stuff that was being said. Yeah, yeah. So I like was, the mic. The microchips one is blowing me away. Microchips mm. in the in the vaccines. Oh. Yeah. You know, the the thing is, if it, if it ever does come out to be true, I will look a fool. But, you know, come on. Be too late. You'll be my, under the my, control my, of the shadowy yeah, that's it. I won't care. government by then. Yeah. <laughs> so, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Bill, Bill Gates will have me by then. <laughs> I will be up, I will be updating Windows on the regular. <laughs> I don't know why they picked on, like, I don't know. Of, out of all the millionaire philanthropists right now, it's like Bill Gates is really getting it in the neck. <laughs> yeah, it's because his Windows Phone isn't selling as much. That's that's the reason he's doing this. It's because so we'll all have Windows Phones. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, Mark, you read you read all the Walking Dead, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed so, it. Yeah, I mean that is, I mean, really in terms of comics, it's certainly the only zombie comic that i read i didn't read i don't think i read it to the end but i was pretty close but um that's i finished it up i stuck with it it mm. was um yeah i i it was like you know when they they introduced the tv series and i found the tv series had i found it to be even though it was deviating from the comics but also keeping a lot of it the same it just had that there was big lulls in it where it, where nothing happened, you know. It yeah. was just like, oh, I might as well be watching Coronation Street for a few days, and then oh, all of a sudden, so and so's dead, you know. And you're like, oh wow, this is really heating up. Like with the, I'm still watching the TV series now. It must be popular. There's three different TV series on, right? Uh, There's mm-hmm. that, that um. Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. I'm up to date with. The Walking Dead, I'm up to date with, and what's the new one with the kids trying to get across the city or whatever it is? Uh, can't remember is it, what it's called. Is it New World or something? Or something like that. Um, yeah. I I gotta be honest, I really enjoyed it. It's only two episodes in, um, but I found that with the comic as well. It was, um, it, it had big lulls in it, you know. It's, it has, it's, that's got it, weird it's, pacing, it's, isn't it? How many issues is it? What was it? 100 and... 128 or something silly. Yeah, something massive. Bonkers. If you if you make a if you make a 130 issue run of a comic, and every single issue is a banger, then you know give up. You you you've won, haven't you? You know. I mean, I think it was more than that, wasn't it? Wasn't it approaching like issue 200 like, or something? It was like 178 or something. Like that, I think. I can have a look. I bought the, the entire same... digital bundle, so I'll. <laughs> yeah, I think it went. It went well after that hundred. Yeah, it did. A hundred was oh, hundred was grim. But um, I mean, it's funny enough. It's one of the few comics that uh, both me, my eldest daughter, and my wife read because Walking Dead was it was such a, a favourite TV show that they wanted to to know what the connective tissue be- between the, the TV series and the comic was. Yeah. And I think in some ways it's a later question I wanted to bring up for superheroes, but that relationship between the, the screen adaptation and the comic, I always got the feeling that the comic led and w- wasn't influenced by the TV show. It kind of did what it was going to do and always set out to do that. I like the fact that they never introduced Daryl into the comic and yeah. and the tv show continued to take the uh comic as a springboard rather than the comic suddenly absorbing things from the tv series which is i think one of my complaints about what happened with you know some of the movie adaptations yeah. i think you know i think it 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 really set the tone knew what it was going to do 
and carried on doing it, which I really admire. And apart from what six issues that Tony Moore did, it's the same writer and the same artist for. It is, yeah, from, yeah. from that. that Which is incredible. I've just, I've just, uh, just, I've just reread that. Um, the t- who Tony Moore? Uh, no, sorry, The Walking Dead in total was 32 volumes. So what is in a volume? It's like four or six issues. So wow. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a hell of a lot. Um, I read most of them in the in the compendiums, you know, when I was working in the shop. Oh, cool. Plus, I got to read them. I got to stay up to date with it because I was reading the issues as they come in, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I forgot my point then, which is a regular thing. <laughs> was it about the the team? Oh yeah, it was about um. The the Tony Moore issues I reread them um, about two weeks ago. The the right. first the first run. It's strange seeing. Yeah. I love I love Tony Moore's work, but yeah. it's weird seeing uh, seeing the the difference. You know, it it's, is. It's, it's it? a lot more cartoony. You know. Yeah. When they when they first when they first shoved him off it, I thought it was a real shame. It, up to about. Yeah. Up to about 80 issues, I was still thinking, oh man, I'd be enjoying this a lot more if uh, if Tony Moore was on it. But you know, um, Adlard smashed it. Yeah. I think you know, and and I and I really think is uh, nobody done ever listened to this, but I, re- I think his work got better and better as it went along. You know. Mm-hmm. I just looked it up. 193. 93. Oh, wow. I think, I think there might be a mini series on that for the Negan stuff as well. Yeah. But, it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting though. I mean, it, I think it's something that is a sort of hallmark of Robert Kirkman. He, he is one that will, I mean, there was a famous sort of marketing stunt he pulled with the end of it. And the fact that he, he still does these kind of drops that he, he dropped, was it die, die, die with that? anyone knowing it was coming and yeah I yeah think, did you read that yeah it was a good laugh wasn't it yeah yeah it was fast <laughs> but the whole way the whole way i'm reading it anything with chris burnham now i've yeah. always got i've always got your voice in the back of my head going ah, it's just a shit frank quietly <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, he, if he ever if he ever listens to this i apologize <laughs> <laughs> something you got any worries yeah I, I've just started rereading them as well. Actually, I'm probably about three quarters of the way through Walking Dead, because last month they finally got round to showing the season finale. It oh, got right. cancelled in it got cancelled in March. Uh, okay. Because COVID came in, but they they hadn't the, the, all they needed was like another week of like rework or something to do post production. Right. So it got cancelled, and the final episode got shown on Fox last month. Um. Oh. What? Just on its own. <laughs> on the, the TV series, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm up to date with all of them. What I didn't realise if it was a finale, I wasn't sure whether it was taking a break. What? What happened? It, they um, when they were showing it um, week by week in February, March, oh. it got all the way up to episode 15, right. which is the penultimate episode of that of season 10, right. and then they had to stop because they hadn't finished the post production work. <laughs> And COVID shut everything down. Right. So last month, and I only caught this by pure chance, on Fox they showed the final episode of right. season 10. So it'll be on catch up. Right, I'm sure. So they showed that one episode and then said, we'll return later on in the year. And cool. it's a really pivotal episode because it brings them, it's a very obvious issue that it, it brings in parallel to catches up with the comics. Uh, right. Okay, that's interesting. Without giving any spoilers, but it was that's quite cool. an iconic um, cover to that particular comic. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of shocked <laughs> everyone. Right? So, um, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. We we were very lucky to have just spotted that last minute. We we caught it the night before we saw an advert just by pure chance. So it's season ten, episode sixteen. You're looking for. I mean, it, it, like like Mark pointed out, it is going from strength to strength. And not yeah. only have you got the three TV shows, but then, you know, they're moving into movies now as well, aren't they? 
Yeah. Apparently, yeah, they're going to do a Rick movie, yeah? Yeah. I mean, TV, I think, going great guns. There are some brilliant zombie um, box sets that you can get. You know, um, we keep mentioning the Netflix word, but there are some really good, quite recent ones. Movies, I'm hoping some quality stuff's going to come out. Comics seems to be leading the way this year, I think, for yeah. quality zombie output anyway. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, totally. I mean, and as we were talking really in terms of uh, uh, earlier about how popular it was before the pandemic, is the pandemic going to affect the popularity? If anything, given the fact that you see that, you know, virus movies are at the top of... Yeah, oh, that was quite disturbing, wasn't it? <laughs> Out, Outbreak came trended at number one. Yeah. So if if zombie movies with the, you know, sort of connections we've mentioned, uh, and I know we'd, we're essentially, we were talking about movies and TV more than comics, but the, the connective tissue, the genres, I think, is still there. That um, if they were popular before, I can't really see it going no nah I can't see that I think they'll always be about wouldn't they yeah I think so Yeah. I think when we first came up with all the genres it kind of felt like a, a newish genre in its own right but yeah I think you're right I think it's pretty much established now isn't it it's definitely a mainstream genre in you know outside of comics mm. I mean, has anybody read the DC? I did, I, well, I read the original Marvel Zombies. I haven't read the the Resurrection because I know if you if you've listened to a few podcasts or interviews with Sean Phillips, he he always jokes about that was his kind of like um, when you get a veteran getting the newcomer award. That was when he was kind of first became noticed, and everyone thought, "Oh, have you seen this new guy, Sean Phillips?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 20 oh. years by then <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I mean that was certainly what brought him uh, you know uh, as an artist to, to uh, a lot of people's attention but so I, I, um, I did read Marvel Zombies I thought that was a you know that was a good fun series but I haven't read Deceased has that uh. changed you know I don't, you know it, I mean there's still it still seems to be a pretty staple zombie series but i just haven't read it that's the the dc one yeah yeah read it at all have you mind no strangely i've only ever followed marvel zombies right yeah i've read marvel zombies but not i am tried this dc stuff i think it was in either the first i think it was the first issue i did pick up that because james harron had a few pages in there massive yeah, massive James Harron fan. So, uh, but um, having it's interesting having picked it up. I did look to see if he was going to do any more pages, and he wasn't. So I didn't <laughs> pick it up anymore. So. Okay. <laughs> it's like I, I picked up my first issue of Thor for Donkey's Years because he he drawn it. So you know, well, well, that's quite a good segue then to superheroes. I mean, that is the connective tissue between these two genres. Uh, zombies was, uh, you know, for a long time, was absolutely massive in a lot of EC stories, and then banned for a long period of time. Till I mean, I mean, Marvel had their zombie series, didn't they, with um, Simon Garth? So that was when they were pushing the envelope with the comics code and getting around things they couldn't do by calling characters like Morbius the living vampire. Yeah, because you couldn't have undead creatures, so I don't know how they got around <laughs> it with the zombie. Yeah, that's berserk, isn't it? But yeah, so we've t- mentioned the two sort of biggest zombie crossovers with superheroes. So, and we haven't read the latest version of that. So, what are we reading superhero wise at the moment? Are we still reading superhero comics? Um. God, do you know what? I'm reading so much that I would have to stop and think. Because I'm reading a lot of image titles, not a lot of them are superhero 
um, yeah. beast, but um, God, I don't even know if I am. No, I know it's an interesting question, isn't it? We, we you? found this last time, didn't we? We were saying that both of us had kind of gone off reading specific superhero stuff. I'm yeah. not. I'm not reading any. Oh, I'm still picking up. It's it's obviously the pandemic's affected stuff with, you know, a lot of the 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 big two. Uh, uh, some of the ones I was reading, I'm not even sure if they're still coming out. Or I was reading Doctor Strange, Kev Walker and um, Mark Wade. Um, but I'm not. Other than that, I wasn't. I'm not reading any Marvel comics. Oh, I, I'm I'm totally lying. I am. The more I think about it, the more I am reading. I'm reading extra Strange Adventures. Yes. The, the Tom King, Tom Mitch King, Gerard, Gerard Scott Shainer, that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, no, I'm reading that, yeah. Uh, I'm also reading the, I suppose can you, you can't really call it a superhero thing. It's that bat that Batman spinoff um, that Scalera's doing with um, yeah, I picked Sean up. Murphy the Halloween the Harley Quinn one. Yeah, that's superheroes. Yeah, I picked yeah, that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, so I'm reading that. That's that's all still great. Yeah, I picked um, up. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, three jokers. So I'm actually reading more DC. It happens every now and again. It's weird, you know, how you get like this kind switch. of cycle between the two, the big two. Yeah. And I'm I'm not really reading any Marvel, but I'm reading more DC. Um, but it's largely creator led, I think, because me and Mark were talking about Matteo Scalera, and that's what made me pick it up in the shop when I was there yesterday. Um, but. Other than that, oh, uh, oh, there's one actually, because it's funny because you mentioned the image. The the new one crossover. Have you read that? No, I did see it. Donny Cates it? and Jeff Shaw. Yeah, right. Did you read it? Yeah. It was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Ah, right. It definitely would make me uh, read the next issue. Right. Okay. So yeah, there's something going on there. I think there's um, uh, apparently he's had a couple of um, near death experiences. He had a, he's he's been pretty ill a couple of times. I didn't realise he'd been ill a few years ago, but he'd been ill this summer, I think, as well. He doesn't say how or why in the in the back matter, but it's it's kind of driven him to um, put certain I think ideas or certain stories that he's he's wanted to get underway uh, right. into practice. And yeah, it's it's. I suppose there's something me and Mike were talking before we started recording about sort of fantasy books and interconnected storylines. And if there's one thing that superheroes excel at, it's that continuity and connective sort of tissue. I yeah. think crossover is definitely one of those books that if you hadn't read a lot of comics or particularly superhero comics, you wouldn't really know or have much interest in. But it really speaks to everyone who's read a lot of comics. I think it's it's definitely designed to be read by comic fans. Right. Uh, uh, you see, this is this is where I think superheroes as a genre has gone for me. What I do tend to read more is like similar stuff. The sort of the meta superhero. So Watchmen, The Boys. You've yeah. just got me onto Black Hammer. Yeah. And that's kind of, do you know, it's the slightly off superhero. It's a not yeah. pastiche, but it's meta oh. superhero. And I think that's where my tastes have gone a bit more recently. Yeah, hundred percent for me. I can't remember the last Marvel comic. I, well, I do remember it, but it it was um, Strange Academy. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, only, I only picked it up because Ramos was drawing it mm. and. It's got a young right in it. Not great. I think I'm just about to jump back in with Marvel, actually. Um, been reading a lot about the X of Swords event that they're doing, which is I'm, a big I'm, crossover. Yeah. Is that X-Men crossover? It is. It's mostly X-Men. But the reason why it's got me is uh, they're bringing Excalibur into it. Oh, great. So a bit of uh, Captain Britain and his sister. Nice. Um, that, 
that's kind of what's drawn me in, I think. Who's um, writing it? Uh, it's all over the shop. It's, it's crossing about the, 10 different series. I picked up the first issue of the Excalibur relaunch oh. and really didn't like it. Oh, no. Oh, don't tell me that. Maybe this was a while ago, but I mean, and, and if somebody else is writing a, a thing, you know, maybe, but... I wasn't. I wasn't no, happy. not sold. No. That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, I loved. Yeah, Excalibur, Captain Britain. You know, it's and he seems to be bringing in quite a few elements of that Captain Britain run, which is, is great. I mean, Claremont did it, but he did it in in that Claremonty way. I can imagine Hickman might be doing it in a little more of an interesting way. Yeah. But I I really didn't like the Excalibur. Uh, revamp because so there's basically it's a creative team of eight people looking at this oh yeah so yeah John uh, John Hickman's in there Jeannie Howard Benjamin Percy Seb Wells Leah Williams Ed Brisson Vita Yela um, Joey Duggan so it's like I said it's hitting across all the X titles which again is a I mean that's why I loved House of M as well because I'm an X-Men fan above anything else yeah, so, same year. I'm scared to get back into X Men because there's so much of it. Yes. You know? But you that was all the, I read at one point. Did you read the revamp, the the Hickman revamp? No, I didn't. You told me to. It's an interesting. Uh, have you read it, Mike? No. That was just after us kind of stopped reading. It was. I did read it, and um, I I didn't like I didn't like all of it, but I like the kind of chance they're taking with it and i listened to him on a few podcasts where he was talking about how i mean i have not read x-men for a long time and and you didn't read it because when you did pick it up it was like this wasn't the x-men and he's obviously put a lot of thought into what what happened with the x-men and why they were had a certain need and fit into the universe and then it kind of dispersed and disappeared over the years and he's given them a new sort of fit i think and then, is and this it, the one? Um, is this the one you were telling me about where they they um, they give Moira the new cool powers? Moira apparently has been a mutant all along. All along, yeah. yeah. I, I, I kind dun, of. Dun, dun, dun. I, I, know, I know the themes. Is it, she's got an infinite number of lifetimes or something. No, it's not infinite. She, X, of course, is ten. Oh, uh, okay. So that's why apparently one of them was was it now House of x and i can't remember what, even what they were called now but one of them you didn't say the x you said it as 10 yeah yeah she's got 10 lifetimes um but in terms of concept it means i think she's lived about seven or eight and during those lifetimes she tried different routes but on her death everything reset and when she starts again she starts with the knowledge of all of her previous lives so you right. know it's 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 in terms of concepts you know it's great and um it is strange and it's strange that this thing that you've grown up with and the one thing that a lot of comic fans uh, depend on is that knowledge of various adventures and this happened and this happened and it throws all that up in the air really because now it could have possibly happened in all of these previous lifetimes it's yeah. like in x number of marvel universes and it throws up lots of different and i think a lot of fans don't like that because there's no concrete ground anymore but in terms of it's just a way of writing things off is it well i think i mean i d- i mean is that what the fans are looking at it like possibly, it's, uh, that whole reboot problem is is always there uh they don't know what they can rely on they don't know what has gone before or you know whether one of their favorite stories did happen or not but in terms of trying something new i think you've kind of got to go there as a company every now and then you You always know the reset's possible i mean what dc's been through recently that that whole reset crisis you know summer event crossover is always there to be able to put everything back in its in its place um but uh, it, it's nice that they're, I think it's nice to take the chance, you know. I did read, I read, the. I think, the 10-issue 
the two ten issue series. But um, I tried the books when they relaunched, but nothing kind of made me keep up with it after the the, right. the launch. I, I found the concept interesting, but then when they went back to a normal publishing as a sort of series, I, I tried a few, but nothing took. I think I was more interested in what the concept was, but then getting back to a basic publishing system, um, it, it, it didn't hook me. And sometimes that's down to creative teams as much as not not a failure of the concept. No. I mean, it, it's strange because we're all kind of saying, yeah, we don't read as much as we used to. But I still think it's kind of the, the seed genre, isn't it? I think it just for, grows. For modern you, you comics. Just, I mean, your tastes change, I think, you know. You, superhero comics will always be with you, but you just, I don't know, as you get older, you're just like, oh, fuck this. I just want something a little bit more gritty, I suppose, or something more set in a real world. And I don't mean like the the New York in the Marvel real world. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think I think that's the way it works for me. But I still love a good good superhero romp, you know. And yet, when it comes to like TV and film, superheroes are at its peak right now mm. with what's coming out. I mean, Netflix your series really helped. They're going to relaunch those on Disney, aren't they? But the Marvel Universe, I mean, the DC Universe films are really coming, getting up to scratch now. Um, and we were talking not long ago, uh, Bloodshot is the is going to be like the first of their universe, of the Valiant Universe. Oh, uh, man, did you, did you watch Bloodshot? I did, yeah. <laughs> Shit on, right? It, it, <laughs> it started off the first half hour, I was thinking like, oh, this is really naff. Oh, hang yeah. on, this is the same as Hardcore Henry. Yeah, and then it just suddenly went, oh, I get it now. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's clever. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those. That... I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I was second, kind of asleep in the first bullet, half hour. The second the bullet went through his face and it all just started <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm in. That's amazing. Yeah, they got it right. Yeah. It was a good, good start. It was just a shame that they kind of got kicked really down quite hard because yeah. that was going to hit the cinema in March, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not what you want when you're about to start a new sort of like film franchise, the Valiant <laughs> films. But there you go. I think it's done well on DVD and and stuff. So yeah, that, was good. that's that. You know that that can be telling for a movie. You know, what I mean, look how much. Um, I know it failed in the box office, but look how much money Dread made on uh, Blu-ray DVD sales, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a great movie. Mm. It's true. Yeah. Um, I, and obviously, due to circumstances, um, you know, like you said, they were going to release it in the film, in, in the flicks, and then all this happened, which is a shame. But if it's smashing it on DVD, then. Yep, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, it's, uh, they'll recoup some of the money, innit? There was one movie that was coming out this year that, apps, that I would have gone to the movies to watch several times. I mean, it would have been out round about now, I think. Kong versus Godzilla. Oh. <laughs> now. Is, that, is that just totally on hold, yeah? Yeah, I think they've put it back to, to next year. So, Shame, um, but yeah, man, that would have been the one oh, I'd have, oh, I'd oh, have yeah. braved COVID for. <laughs> um, the one that was tempting me was June. I yeah, love yeah. June. Yeah. since I was a kid and I just want to see that so much but yeah I mean it's just the thing superhero movies really are kicking it though aren't they when it comes to the films and I, I'm guessing that's got to reflect with younger readers there must be huge sales well there are huge sales in superhero comics and I'm not I just sure whether it's my yeah. from working in the shop mm. I, I, I really? don't I don't think it does transfer. Yeah, I, I, when there was a, you would get like a little interest in, you know, a, a bigger turn up of new readers when a movie came out, but not in the sense where people were like, well, hang on, this is amazing. I better check out where it really came from. You oh know? man, I thought it would. Uh, it doesn't. So, doesn't always. Um, 
So our next generation of readers are still actually buying the movie toys rather than the comics. 100%. Yeah. I think there's yeah, a bit yeah. of... Um, I think they've found some success in like the scholastic but young adult sort of side, haven't they? I think, you know, school books sort of sales um, where they've been doing... Marvel's been doing Miss Marvel and... Um, yeah, she's really popular, right? And DC have been doing... Um, like the those kind of young adult Harley um, Batworld books. I think they've done a Harley. I think they did a uh, oh the young Batman one. I think. I think they're trying to they they're still trying, but from what what I've listened to and and read, it's not necessarily translated into comics. I think graphic novels. Wow. Uh, they're all. I think. They're not going in. I don't think they're going into comic shops. I don't think they're buying floppies, but I think book sales have right. reflected it a bit more. But um, I think what that's what doubly hurt really was they were desperate to get those people. And as a long time reader, I found it very confusing when they brought in some elements from the TV, uh, from the movies but not all of the elements. I found it really confusing that some superheroes were made to look like they were in the movies. Who the actor was. Yeah, that's that's a bit jarring, isn't it? Well, Captain America got just, you know, he got too teched up and Iron Man got too teched up. I, I could never be bothered drawing either one of them in their movie versions. If anybody asked me for a sketch, I can't. It was like, oh, really? Can I not just draw him in? Get him in a spandex. In his pajamas, yeah. Get, get, get Stark in a dustbin. <laughs> Stick the nose on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the fact that you would have some characters, that so you'd have Coulson in there, but you wouldn't have, you know, other characters from the movie. I found it really confusing. I'd, I'd just do it all or nothing kind of thing. Yeah. I think. But, so you, you kind of marginalised it for an audience that never appeared and just sort of, annoyed the people who've been reading it for, for donkey's years, really. Yeah. And that made a smash ton of money at the movies, didn't they? they still you are. Know? Yeah. yeah. Still. And I think, yeah. I mean, they've got, they've had hiccups. I mean, it is, I think there's a, an idea that the genre itself was a moneymaker. But, you know, when you've had disappointments like Harley Quinn, didn't make half as much money as I think they they thought it. it well, would. I think I think all the DC movies are compared to the Marvel movies are failing. You know, Wonder Woman did it right, didn't she? I think yeah, I think that was the just the the female aspect of it. Mm. You know, um, the target audience. Yeah. Plus, I can't wait to see uh, what's it called 1984. Yeah, yeah. oh man, <laughs> that does look good. so good. And she's a great Wonder Woman, right? And I think, you know, it, it was a, a, a proper story. I think it was interesting that it was a superhero in a different time period, that it wasn't sort of modern day. Yeah. World War One was was a brilliant uh, way to introduce her. Um, and again, now, with the, even with the, the 80s sort of version of it, yeah, I think yeah. it was, it was a, a good concept, good cast, good story, which yeah. wasn't the case with a lot of the others you know um no um it was it's kind of like the that flicking through through decades kind of thing though it's like uh it's like the you know first class and it's like the x-men yeah. ones isn't it they yeah. were all set in the uh, in different decades which was amazing yeah it's a good idea yeah yeah it's great i'm really looking forward to uh, uh um also i would like to say that even though I did say that the movies are not, uh, the DC movies aren't doing as well in the box office as the Marvel ones. I, I like them. I like yeah. Justice League. No, I, I really I, did I watched, like Justice I, League. Yeah. I watched I watched Justice League again last week. Mm. You know. Um, I've got the blue I'm looking. Ring. I'm looking forward to the. You know the the Snyder <laughs> cut thing. Mm-hmm. They're making it into a series now, though, aren't they? Yeah. Four part series or something on HBO. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Suicide I Squad. I like that. Good. I like that kitty. I liked Suicide Squad. Yeah, it was great. I like that kitty playing the Flash. I thought you did a good Flash. Yes. Yeah. 
I didn't yeah, get on great. with the TV, I didn't get on with the DC TV series that well. But the films have been spot on. I'm still watching them. I've, yeah. I've been told I have to rewatch a few from Pete. Mm. But uh, which I will do. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed them. I have to say I enjoyed them more than uh Agents of Shield. The DC stuff that, I thought. Last season of Agents of Shield. Watch it. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Loved it. It's like a full skipping through time. It's it's like a, it's a little bit like um Legends of Tomorrow, you know? It's just like bang, one minute they're in one time, boom, they're in another. And the and I told you, I showed you a photo, didn't I? The the, the credit, yeah. the title, the title credit, the the title scenes, they match the uh, the time, the era. It's, oh, it's right. great. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, but that's all done. That's finished, isn't it? It's quite telling that these two genres, we actually have almost more connective tissue at yeah, the moment through say, TV and film I than we do through, for last 10 minutes. through content. <laughs> 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 We're actually watching more superheroes and zombies than we are reading them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's interesting. I mean, of course, I'll we've watch... got... Sorry. Yeah, go on. I watch anything comic related that's turned into a TV thing. You know, I've I've got to, I've just got to check it out. Plus I'm terrible. Once I start, it's like I was watching parts of the walking dead TV series. I was just watching that. My eyes closed, you know, I was, I was watching that whilst playing Assassin's Creed or something. It was just like, (laughs) this is killing me. But I know that if I stop watching it now, in three weeks, they're going to kill Rick. Right? Or they're going to they're gonna kill Michonne. You know, they're going to kill someone. And then I'm going to have to go back and watch ten episodes just to get to that bit, you know? So I just I just keep watching them all. I'm still watching Flash. I watched all of Arrow. Um, I'm still watching Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, what else is there? Swamp Thing I didn't finish. I will, but I, I think I got about four episodes in, something like that. Don't even know what that's on. Uh, that's on Amazon Prime. Ah, uh, that yeah. would be why. Yeah, I mean, they. This, I've forgotten just how many series there are as well as films. Hundreds of them. Yeah. 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 Did you watch and that? Other- did you watch that Spanish film yet? No, no, I forgot. I tell you what, I did watch though. I watched the Public Enemy uh, Urban Myths thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, he was proper an eye in there, Flav. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good, though. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Um, I tell you, what else did I watch? Deadly Class, enjoyed that before it got cancelled. Yeah, that was shaping up well. Um, yeah. When it, when it gets cancelled. Yeah. You, especially if you haven't read it yet, uh, watched it yet. It's like, oh, is it worth watching it for one one season then? That's the thing, isn't it? I'm still up to date with the comics, mm-hmm. though, and that's, that's still rocking, you know? Mm-hmm. I think the, there was this Spanish movie that I mentioned to Mark that me and Non looked into on Netflix, and it's, um, it's about a police detective who needs to solve a series of very nerdy serial killer crimes. Uh, and to, to solve them, he needs the help of his comic book reading, I think. Oh, uh, it's come up on my, as a suggestion for me. Yeah, yeah I think it's called something like Uncanny <laughs> Origins or something like that. His boss is a cosplaying sort of, uh, or is a cosplayer. So she appears in most sort of scenes in some sort of weird outfit i think (laughs) it's a testament to the fact that superhero culture has impacted so much on pop culture that it's become you know a background and you know worthy of inclusion in its own right in something um yeah Yeah. as somebody who's read all of the comics you you can solve the crimes immediately you know it's it's a kind of superhero seven in the sense that instead of it being based on, you know, the seven deadly sins, 
it's based on various um, first appearances or kind of like, you know, um, right. key issues. So you're well ahead, obviously, of you know why the guys perform the murder in a certain way and what the references are. But um, it was good fun. But the fact that um, it's been made really, I think, shows how in the past superheroes were were totally just something that were kiddie and something that was you might have a cartoon a comic you know pajamas occasional tv show you know the hulk yeah. but it really has got to the point now it is something that the whole family knows about really it's yeah. you know it, it has it has made that leap i do worry that we're storing up a problem for future though because some of the best respected comic book writers are finding work in Hollywood now. Mm-hmm. Naming some obvious names, obviously, and then quite a lot I know um, not so famous writers are not working directly on a film, but they're you know they're brought in as part of the writing pool and things yeah. like that, not even credited. And I but think that's, that's, is that's, there going to be a drain? From comic talent oh, right. to I Hollywood, yeah, maybe. I think that's always happened, though, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I Str- think so. Straczynski for one. Yeah, he's he's always been there, hasn't he? Um, that's even now you say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Stra- Strax, 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 whatever that guy. I mean, also maybe the fact that they learnt their chops in comics before moving to you know other media is something that uh it it means that i think mark's right it's always happened you've always had a pull from from one media through another so you work you you start working in comics and get good at your craft and and get well known get to the point where i mean tom king to a certain extent has has you know worked his way up he's one of the biggest writers you could argue at the moment and he's just started working on a few sort of projects jeff johns has gone sort of that route brew baker uh a lot of them have got their production companies but those production companies are based on the properties that they've created while writing comics yeah i think the combination of comics being uh almost a storyboard and one of the areas of media that are willing to uh explore some of the crazier ideas are something that is has made comics that breeding ground for very creative people yeah very different ideas you know and crazy characters or concepts there's something about comics that will sometimes make a, a concept pop out that probably wouldn't have perhaps come from novels or you know uh, yeah tv or something i don't know there's just i think there is something about it and superheroes in in particular is a genre that allows some of those ideas to be particularly crazy i think we talked about it when we talked about it um uh, in its own genre there's there's not a lot you can't put in a superhero comic yeah. in terms of concept it will absorb any crazy idea uh, you know yeah i mean it just seems to me that any uh, all sorts of comics are just uh, the amount of comics that are being used as the source material for films and tv right now is at the highest it's ever been yeah, yeah. but the vast majority is still really within the superhero realm mm. loads of examples of others you know there's lots of, well yeah there's just so too many to to mention netflix for a start every time they come out with a big new series it's like you've got like a one in four chance that it was actually a comic first well it's it's only going to carry on isn't it because um, yeah. uh, um i'm looking forward to it actually the uh the mark millar stuff the what's he doing yeah. jupiter's legacy yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. starlight yeah is it Starlight? Yeah. 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 It's everything, isn't it? Except Kick-Ass and Kingsman, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think um, 
I loved all them. those comics, so yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to those. Yeah. No, I mean it. It is interesting that somebody. Yeah, you look at somebody who's made it into being a, you know, producer and being in charge of that sort of introduction of your stuff somewhere. No, it, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. It, yeah. It is incredible. Well, why not? In it, more power to them. They've totally. been making an absolute killing from it, which they, I should imagine they, you know, they made a, made a healthy enough living from comics, but nothing on the scale of, uh, of, of what they're making from, the yeah. East, you know. Yeah, I mean he's working sure. for Netflix now, isn't he? He's essentially doing for Netflix what he did for himself in comics. It's that yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah. ring ringmaster role. Okay, so. Given that thorough examination of the genres, what island are we going to choose? You've got an island where you're only allowed to read superhero comics and then too far to swim to. You've got your island where you're only allowed to read zombie comics. I'm going to go superhero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's... I. If I was stuck on an island and I, and I could only have superhero comics, I would take that because the genre is bigger. Yeah. So you would have more choice. I think I'd, I think I'd quickly get – well, maybe not quickly, but I think I would eventually get bored of um, zombie comics uh, if I was only allowed to read zombie comics. Yeah. It's interesting, I mean, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Even though I'm not reading any superhero comics, <laughs> at the moment, um, I think I would. Uh, I think I would pick those over zombie. It's such a shame that you're only allowed one, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's my whole point. The World Cup is very Highlanderish. Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> I'd, I'd blame football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a problem with ours. Uh, our concepts. No, it's it's a football thing. Yeah. Um, Mike. You know what? Uh, pretty much the same reasons. It has to be superhero. It, it just the <laughs> amount of comics that are out there um, over the years. I want to be comfortable with reading material that's going to last me on this island, and I've read most of the zombie comics that I want to read. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to have to go superhero myself, actually. Well, given the sheer amount of superhero comics as well, you could probably use them as building material. <laughs> <laughs> Keep throwing them in the ocean until it all just soaks yeah. up. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you're never going to run out of um, kindling or, uh, you know, give some nice, thick, insulated superhero comic walls on your island. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's 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 got to be superhero. I mean, it's it just the cons that you can have zombies in superheroes, and it, it, there isn't really a concept you can't have in superhero comics. You can have a fantasy superhero, crime superhero, a romance superhero. It's you know, it's just one of those sticky genres. So I think I'm going to have to go with that. So we will, uh, if as this has been released, there will be a poll online on twitter so if you want to uh choose your own favorite of superheroes or zombies that will enable one of them to move on to the semi-finals um but yeah that's the arguments as we put forward so mark where can people catch you online um you can catch me on Instagram, uh, The Art of Sock, S O K, and uh, the same on Twitter. And yeah, that'll do. I think uh, <laughs> I, I can't. I've got a Facebook page as well, I've, like a Facebook art page, but the, I can never remember the address. I know the page is called The Art of Sock, <laughs> but the address isn't for some reason. I think it's like uh, Facebook. It's change it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Facebook.com forward slash 
Son of Ken. Yeah, I think I'm Mike Wednesday 77 on Facebook because yeah. I was. I started off calling myself when that was back in the day when you could have a fictional name on Facebook. You were Clerk Kent, weren't you, for, for the longest time? Yeah, they made me get rid of it though. Yeah, same with they, me. They I told think. me that I had to prove, I had to show them, <laughs> I had, I had to show Clark them ID, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the, yeah, and the planet wasn't giving it to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm this man, this Pete on Twitter and Instagram, and will post soon. Uh, Mike? I'm at Cthulhu Punk on Twitter. Right, well, Sock, thank you so much for coming on. And, oh, thanks uh, for having me. Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah, and I, I have had my drinking trousers dry cleaned and I'm <laughs> looking forward to clambering into them tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Same, Brilliant. but I didn't have mine cleaned. <laughs> I'm still wearing the ones I had on six months ago. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. everyone for listening. Uh, speak soon. Bye. Cheers. Thank you for listening to my dulcet tones and their northern ramblings. Find out more about the Lakes International Comic Art Festival at comicartfestival.com and find us on Twitter at comicartfestpod or online at comicartpodcast.uk.